Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. Zooming in a little bit more in depth on the covert narcissist relationship dynamic. Um, I think it's very interesting to note really how the, the difference between how the covert narcissist and the overt narcissist will utilize supply. And uh, this is in response to a viewer's question really on how a covert narcissist can maintain the long-term relationships. Realize that the covert narcissist is deriving a certain nutrient, a certain um, element, a certain capacity from you that is serving as a source of supply. So this can be the fact that you have companionship. Um, it can be the fact that you have, you know, this narcissist has someone to eat with. It can be that this person has someone for them to cook for them. Uh, perhaps, you know, you do all the house cleaning. Uh, perhaps you are the matriarch or patriarch of the family and so you are the authority figure in the family. You're basically responsible for all the child rearing, um, providing the direction in the life, the, uh, uh, the direction in the family, the religious life. Uh, perhaps you know you are nurturing to them or um, you know you are their drinking buddy. Uh, you know the, the covert narcissist supply dynamic in their relationships can really be um, as simple as that. So the covert narcissist is not going to replace a supply source in much the same manner that say a outwardly flamboyant and showy uh, sort of ostentation and arrogant haughty sort of behavior dynamic that is displayed by the overt narcissist. So, you know, because, you know, with the, the cars, the watches, the high profile job, I mean, their inner supply circle can be uh, quite liquid to them. So they can go and get another supply right away. Um, you know, and oftentimes, you know, they will wear their heart on their sleeve and so they can just reel another in right away. Making the false promises, the lies, um, living, you know, a double life. Uh, not disclosing specific details, you know, they have a family or that they have children. Oftentimes, you know, you don't know their history. So they are very adept at this pathological lying. I mean, they can sweep all sorts of information on the rug and essentially pull one over on people. They do this all the time. They are, they are always on. So, you know, um, and until that mask falls off, you know, um, you really don't know what's going on underneath, which is the authentic self. Which the authentic self really is what wins in the long run, people. I want you to understand that, you know, that, that false self, that false mask is only going to be intact for so long. You know, um, and as we get older, when in, 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 you know, encounters more health issues, and, you know, that, that mask is, you know, knocked on even harder to crumble. In other words, you're vulnerable. You do have some limitations. You do have some illnesses. You do need to seek, uh, you know, help from a, a, a doctor. You have high blood pressure. Um, you have COPD now. You have cancer. Um, you have arthritic symptoms that are limiting now your, your uh, narcissistic way of life. You know, you can't proceed along that. And so oftentimes the narcissist will uh, you know, treat their illness in very sort of inhumane ways and either over medicate or, you know, things of this nature in order to deal and handle. But really that authentic self, you know, the mask is going to, you know, have to be thicker and thicker to hide that true authentic self. So the covert narcissist, the one who is a little bit, um, has that superior attitude really locked up like Fort Knox, you know, they do not speak but their action speaks volumes. It is, it is abuse by omission. And so really when you realize and you look at, you have to be, a, you know, courage enough to ask the big questions and say, you know, what am I really providing here in this relationship? You know, and what am I really receiving? Oftentimes the covert narcissist will have you completely uh, manipulated to the point where you actually think you're receiving X, Y, and Z when, when you're really the one who is giving the X, Y, and Z. So it takes a really clarity of perspective and realizing the manipulative uh, tactics that are being utilized. And the covert narcissist, 
um, is oftentimes it is felt um, in the psychological community that they engage uh, very paradoxically in a very rich fantasy life. So, you know, the, the fantasy life can be one that they pursue either, you know, online, um, where they're on websites, or, you know, they're uh, seducing people at their workplace. They're, they're engaging in what is um, almost hinging on, on sexual abuse, but they're never questioned because of their uh, position. So they're able to kind of satisfy their other supply needs and basically what I'm going to call subverted ways, um, you know, uh, sublimating ways, I think what Freud would call it, basically, you know, going to strip clubs, hiring, um, you know, uh, hookers. I mean, you know, this is a very big practice for executives, you know, um, and it's not looked down upon, uh, especially in, you know, areas like uh, London and in Europe. I mean, oftentimes, you know, um, this is what these executives feel that they deserve, you know, to release stress, which is just an excuse. It's just a status. It's just a power move. You know, give me a break, you know, um, you know, reduce stress. I mean, that, that's the biggest hogwash I've ever heard. And if you expect me to believe that, you know, you're, you're caught in the lies, you're, you're caught up in the web of the lies that they're dishing up. Um, and, you know, these, oftentimes the covert narcissist is never questioned on their beliefs because they're not very verbal on their beliefs. So, you know, really part of disarming the covert narcissist is to get into that sort of um, discussion and interaction with them because if they're not able to verbalize to you, big issue guys um, you know that you need to be able to crack through that mask you deserve to be able to connect with that authentic person within because really what happens as what Jan, uh, John Bradshaw describes in you know his uh, studies and experiences that otherwise there's a transference of shame and it's almost as if what happens is almost as you know the the uh, abuse then you know develops almost a uh, mask of, of uh, happiness as well. You know, it's almost like the mask uh, creates a mask in, in the partner. So, um, really that, and, and then the partner who, does, who wants to live the authentic and genuine life is the one who's suffering and who's hurting, but then adopts a mask um, to them. And, and so oftentimes in the covert abusive relationship, that is what is occurring, but unbeknownst consciously to that person. So um, that really is one of the very important and profound dynamics that we see in the covert narcissist relationship. And uh, once again, if you do need um, you know, individual custom help uh, discussion, please do contact me. Um, I'm able to provide that for you. Um, and please do uh, share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support.